Hello, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webinar, Accessibility Toolkit with Perfecto and Evinced. Before we begin, I'd like to cover three housekeeping items for our viewers. First, at the bottom of your audience console, you'll find a few widgets for questions and additional resources. When you have questions for the presenters during the webinar, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question. We will answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation, and if we run out of time, we'll get back to you via email. Second, if you need any tech support during today's webinar, please use the help option. Third and finally, a copy of today's slide deck is available in the resources section at the bottom of your screen. We'll also email you a link to the recording of the webinar within the next few hours. With that, I'll introduce our presenters for today. Johnny Lamb, Global Sales Engineer with Perfecto by Perforce, and Kevin Berg, System Engineer with Evinced. Johnny and Kevin, thanks for joining us on today's webinar. You may take it from here. Thank you, Ali. And it's my pleasure to co-present and have a discussion with Kevin. And Kevin and I, we, we've known each other for a little while right now. Uh, I think we've been in this field, the, the QA domain and the accessibility domain for, for quite a few years now. So really excited um, to have a discussion with you. And uh, I think Kevin, you, you've you whipped up a quite, a quite a nice demo to showcase uh, some of the co, co um, material and the solution that we came up together. So welcome, welcome Absolutely. Kevin. Thank you, thank you, for, thank you for having us. So I know that yeah, we, we've been having, having a chat about this and uh, I know you also, uh, on a daily basis, talk to a lot of customers about um, accessibility, and especially when it comes to mobile and web uh, accessibility. So we we kind of thought about it, and we kind of talked about a few topics prior to you know hopping onto this uh, live chat. One of the things we talked about is you know what what is has been changing over the last um, course of the last couple of years, and I think one thing that we we both see, especially when we're having this these discussions for prospect and customer, is that. Now it seems like it's been it's it's coming to a point where it's becoming quite a bit of a focus. And what what are your thoughts and what do you see in, in terms of your conversations? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Accessibility is really coming to the forefront of of the conversation in the uh, in the development process, especially. You know, as we've seen, um, you know, maybe ten years ago we saw a web shifting web uh, functional testing shifting left, and then we saw mobile follow. And then, uh, the, the, then we saw security testing moving to where we can shift that left. And now, uh, thankfully, uh, with events, we have the ability to, and the technology, excuse me, the technology for accessibility testing to shift left as well. And that's what we're seeing is, is a need for that in the, in the market. Shifting left uh, has become a standard uh, just because of how easy it makes things and, and how cost efficient it is to fix things earlier on in the pipeline when they're you know, faster, cheaper, and easier to fix. Um, and developers aren't having to switch contexts all the time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We've been having a lot of discussion at Perfecto and, and Perforce as well. A lot of customers that come to us with, let's say, um, accessibility requirements, it's really, hey, how do I, first of all, um, embed this as our part of our SDLC? So we've heard terms like shifting left, like how can we ride along with our existing automation? And also, how can we bring faster feedback back to our developers? And uh, we've, we've talked about this. I know you have a lot of insights, but we know that um, this is really a challenge for a lot of folks. So we know that, first of all, the world is becoming a more inclusive place. So not only is accessibility at the forefront, but this is a, a, a global initiative that we see you know, certain nations uh, put more emphasis on. And certain nations are also, you know, shortly falling in and having a lot of these accessibility guidelines and rules. Um, you mentioned of quite a few key metrics with that I'm a little surprised about. So, for example, I think you mentioned that, for example, 15% um, of the global population has some sort of an accessibility um, issue. So it seems like the market is is uh, growing. It's quite big, and there's definitely a need to um, have some sort of solution in, in the space. Absolutely, and it's always just a wonderful thing when, you know, doing the right thing by making accessibility and, and uh, websites and mobile apps accessible for everything aligns with business interests as well. Uh, and so, uh, you know, of course we want uh, to make, make websites accessible, make sure everyone uh, is able to access the web and, and applications. You know, but like as we mentioned, you know, the 15% of the world has some sort of impairment. I mean, if we look even purely objectively, 
uh, that's a segment that uh, uh, we want to engage as, as customers and, and bring our services to those folks. And so it's, it's just a, a really exciting time when uh, uh, we're able to do both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think we, we see it uh, this through the same lens as well. One thing we have noticed is a lot of times this is something where when we ask a prospect is accessibly important, they always say yes. But um, we do see that enterprise in, in general, and they're struggling with transformation. And we see it, there's evidence of this. This slide is, is really powerful because this is kind of showing us the disconnect between what they're saying and what's actually happen, happening to their organization. And this graph, uh, why I find is really powerful is really, this is showing us that um, this is a key requirement. However, because of the struggles of the day-to-day -day and embedding this in their development cycle, there's more and more of these infringement and more and more of these lawsuits that are happening because of accessibility issue. And Kevin, I know we we had a chat. You mentioned about COVID, and you know this is actually pushing this further and accelerating the whole process. Yeah, and I, I think that's the case for a lot of you know more more users are now uh, uh, accessing platforms from a you know digital only perspective. Um, the uh, and and with that came the uh, push to make sure that things were accessible, and you know this this does this graph doesn't surprise me uh, because you know we see more and more more of these lawsuits which which are unfortunate. These lawsuits are really expensive, time consuming, and when really we just want to make sure that things are accessible. And so, um, you know, we're seeing beyond just lawsuits, we're also seeing um, governments get involved. I know Canada has a law. Has laws that are that uh, you know are pushing companies to be uh, accessible to certain guidelines, and and those uh, requirements are are quite punitive if they don't meet those standards, which uh, you know is great for the the end users to to make sure they have an accessible experience. And you know we're also seeing in, in Europe as well, where uh, those types of laws are coming, and and companies are are preparing for them. And then in the U.S., uh, accessibility is such a focus uh, uh, that. You know, it's it's becoming a really influential topic, and and something that um, you know we're having conversations with with uh, uh, a number of customers, large and small, uh, across the country to to help make sure that that everything is is accessible. Uh, to to your point, to prevent lawsuits, but also uh, for all the other benefits of, of that it's accessible uh, websites provide, which is you know increased revenue, and then of course the 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 tie-in where you know accessible applications and websites are also more often than not better designed uh easier user flows better user experience in general mm -hmm. and one thing i i think um re it's really interesting a lot of these um lawsuits or a lot of these uh, accessibility issues are really simple fixes so it could be mm -hmm. something as simple as a contrast or having the right labels at the right point what has your experience been when you know in interacting with your prospects? Absolutely, I mean, and, and and you're so right about how a lot of them are simple fi fixes, but the problem traditionally is, you know, if we were to say take an average, um, you know, retail website, you know, there might be uh, five or ten thousand pages on that on that site that that needs to be scanned for accessibility issues, and and and, and what might happen is you might return. Uh, you know, between 150,000 and 300,000 accessibility issues on that page. And while many of them uh, may be simple fixes, what you end up with is a, is a huge data problem uh, that is really difficult. I mean, you can't, uh, walking into a development room and saying, hey, you know, I've got, let's say 100,000 issues that we need to fix on our website is daunting. It's, it's, it's a quick mm -hmm. way to get uh, a kicked out of the room and so uh, this is something that uh, uh, needs to be changed in order to um, uh, uh, approach these problems more efficiently and spoiler alert we've got a, a solution for you that for that uh, uh, access uh, from events that uh, we'll be happy to shed some light on here when we get into the demo mm -hmm. I can imagine and and really having these conversations with developers um, if you bring them a ton of issue, like first of all, where do they prioritize? Where do they focus? And more importantly, exactly. like which one of those are actually matter? Like which one of those, first of all, infringes on any existing laws? But more importantly, which one of those is going to make an impact to your to your audience? 
and you know which one of those should we really take a look and take seriously which i think brings us to our next point i know existing solutions in the market are are quite a legacy there aren't a lot of good options out there and we often hear a few things so when we engage with prospects i think the most common feedback we have is we ask them hey what are you doing regarding accessibility the top um, i guess the top response is really hey we're we're doing it diy we're doing it manual there's there's no automation involved um, we've also heard folks that have some sort of tooling where it, it helps them lower the bar or do some sort of scanning, but it's not done consistently. It's not done in cycle as part of Sprint. So by the time they find these uh, defects or they get feedback to the developers, we run into that situation, Kevin, where you described there's thousands of not you know, hundreds of thousands of issues and they don't know where to focus. Exactly. Yep. Couldn't agree more with these, and you know, the, the some of these the, this approach, you know, used to work okay, you know, back when the waterfall method of software development was prevalent. You could you could fit lengthy ma manual testing cycles into your release cadences because you know there was there was time. However, now you know we're ha we're seeing um, pe folks releasing code every day as the standard, if not. Um, you know, every minute, like Amazon, so um, it's it, it, there has to be a solution that fits into these modern cycles, just as as you're pointing out here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and we've also heard a lot of times folks would rely on, let's say, a third party audit at the end of a cycle. And again, you know, going back to waterfall, maybe it was all right, but if you're releasing, you know, uh, biweekly or even daily, in in many cases. Now your feedback loop becomes uh, dragged out and you don't really have that visibility and you're really incurring a lot of risk as part of that process. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. we talked about it and I think um, Kevin and I, we these are the things that we see across pretty much all of our customers and prospect. And these are the top five items which we see, you know, what are the bare bone minimum required in order to, to have this as part of the process, but also to have a, a website or a native application designed with accessibility in mind. So first thing, I think um, we, we talked about it, easy integration with existing automation. The ride along concept we hear a lot. It used to be you have some sort of, uh, let's say a UI automation. Nowadays, it's not good enough to just have a functional script, but how can you reuse that functional script for things like accessibility, where it's not a duplicate effort, you're taking existing code but adding a few things or tweaking it or maybe adding a configuration change in order to output that type of uh, detail that you need. Next thing I think, Kevin, you're more intimately familiar with is rules and regulation. I know you mentioned Canada, you mentioned UK, but definitely there's a lot of guidelines. And what are your thoughts in terms of uh, where the industry is heading in and what are, what are some of the things that are on the horizon? Absolutely, yeah, and so the the way that we approach is, is we want to think about um, uh, accessibility in a more continuous state as opposed to that thing that happens once a year in our yearly audit. Now, don't get me wrong. These audits are incredibly important. However, they do represent a single point in time. And so we want to be able to provide a solution that detects issues automatically and, and, and detects the critical ones, the ones that uh, uh, impact users the most and are blocking the functionality of websites, because those are the ones that, you know, tend to be brought up most in the um, uh, in these types of lawsuits. And so uh, we have worked really closely, Event has worked really closely with our customers uh, to create rule sets, both that align with the WCAG standards, of course, but are also really uh, uh, ones that our customers see that uh, impact end users the most. And of course, you know, uh, rules and regulations, as we discussed, the, the laws in, in Canada and, and coming other, other places in the world as well. Mm -hmm. And that brings us to our next point. I think um, understanding the rules and regulation, you know, riding along with existing automation, but after that's all said and done, um, really, the, the the second half of the equation is how do we bring that insight back to our developers, and you know how do we have something actionable that we can immediately look at and figure out for our developer, you know, where to focus on. And I know um, I've seen I've seen your demo very impressive. Um, we're going to see it in a bit, and Kevin's going to elaborate on all the good stuff that you know Evans brings to the table. Mm -hmm. 
Um, two more things of which we, we we talked about very which are important, especially when when we're talking to uh, about platforms. We're really focused on things like not only the web side of the house, but also the mobile side of the house. Because we do see that, for example, we, we've done our research and report, and we know that the mobile segment is is much uh, is faster growing. It's going at about 18% year over year in terms of investment spent on mobile application. So we do see that nowadays, not it's not um, good enough to just have a presence on the website or like having a responsive web design, but also investing in native application or applications built on Flutter, React, but all sorts of these are different hybrid technologies where, uh, frankly speaking, that's where uh, since um, really, really since COVID or, or since you know the last couple of years, uh, customers are focusing more and more of their engagement with uh, enterprises with. And last but not least, I think Kevin, we talked about this, everything that we said uh, right now has to tie into an existing process. And we do see that it, it's important to be part of CICDN. We're going to show it in, in a second how that all ties together. Absolutely. So, Kevin, so, I think um, you know you have a demo just, prepared, and let's um, absolutely. So, just I think there's a little sorry, bit of lag, but keep talking over you. Great. So, uh, the first thing I wanted to do is outline, you know, how Events approaches uh, the the previous slide, right? With the you know how we have designed our tools to fit into enterprise release cycles for both, um, you know, speed and uh, reporting and, and to make sure that they work uh, uh, within modern release cycles. So the first is, you know, we want folks to gain even more value from their existing in uh, uh, their functional testing that they've written. So events supports all the most popular uh, testing frameworks here you know, our focus today is on mobile. So uh, we've got Appium, XUI test, Espresso, and of course, uh, Quantum, which we'll show in, in a minute. But on our website, we also support, you know, Selenium, Cypress, WebDriver IO, all of those uh, testing frameworks as well. And so that allows uh, 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 folks to just um, take their existing tests, plug in just a couple lines of code uh, as far as integration, and uh, automatically add accessibility scans to those tests. And since today, it's very easy to, to scale horizontally, uh, to run a couple different uh, builds in, in parallel, it's very simple to, you know, add you, along with your functional smoke test, let's say, your, your security smoke test, your, your unit smoke test, and just have a, a build for uh, accessibility as well. Um, we've designed all of our tools to run on any application. So a key component, especially for folks uh, uh, running accessibility uh, in, in QA, um, is that access to the application source code isn't needed. And so we can scan any app, and you also don't have to inject any uh, sort of SDK into the building of the app which is a really important thing because we want to be testing the actual application that our customers are going to get their hands on. And then uh, events is cross-platform. One of the problems with uh, the existing accessibility tools out there is, is they're all very segmented. Um, it's, there's not a tool out there that allows you to run a consistent standard set of, of rule sets for accessibility across both iOS and Android. And that's something that uh, our, um, our, uh, our tools uh, come with out of the box. And then to your point, Johnny, um, it also doesn't matter at all how the application is built. We, we scan the app from the user perspective. So regardless of whether it's whether using one of the, the, uh, uh, the Xcode, uh, iOS, UI platforms, Swift, Swift, et cetera, um, Android, if you're using Jet Compo Jetpack Compose or the Android uh, development tools or the cross-platform tools like React Native, Ionic, Flutter, you, you name it. Uh, it makes no difference. We're able to scan all of them for accessibility issues. Next slide, please. Oh, uh, and then, you know, the key and the crux of these tools has to be that they detect, automatically detect uh, more accessibility issues. You know, we have to be able to detect 
critical issues that impact users and uh, uh, so that by running these tests, we're getting more value. And so this is one of the things that Events does really well. Uh, as opposed to the to legacy tools, Events has brought modern technology and pointed it towards the accessibility problem. So for Events, uh, it, it, we don't just look at the code of the application. We start with uh, rendering the app and using computer, computer vision to capture aspects and, and using machine learning to recognize and gain additional context by analyzing uh, the application from that perspective. And through that type of process, we're able to, to detect uh, uh, types of issues automatically that previously had it to be, uh, were only able to be found through tedious, uh, time-consuming manual testing or uh, even very uh, uh, the guided manual testing that's also very time-consuming. And, so, and then, you know, as in all testing, um, there's no point in, writing, in running a number of tests unless the information that you get back from them is valuable. And so uh, some of the problems that Events has worked to solve is, you know, creating a single consolidated report that has all of the information needed to uh, identify, replicate, and remediate issues. And so um, otherwise, uh, there's no bigger nightmare than, and then, well, there probably are, but getting at the end of a single end-to-end -end test having 12 12 report files that you then have to consolidate and deduplicate and dig through, and it just creates a nightmare that uh, uh, is very frustrating for, for the people interpreting those reports. And so making sure that you have easy to understand, actionable reporting uh, that, that, that suggests how to fix these issues directly to the developers is, is really important for um, uh, a tool to be useful and make adoption easy among uh, enterprise users. Mm -hmm. So I think Speaking of adoption, point, Kevin, I think this, oh, this yeah. seems really timely. Um, the reason why this webinar happened in the first place is because in, within the Perfecto existing customer pool, we've been hearing a lot of noise and our, our customers are telling us that, hey, you know what, we, we've, we're evaluating events and we want events to work with Perfecto. And I think vice versa, Kevin, you've heard in quite a few of your prospect calls where they're, they're using Perfecto or they're looking at a lab vendor to pair with. And... Um, Kevin and, and I, we've been working closely. Uh, in the demo, we're going to showcase a very exciting end-to-end -end flow where we're leveraging the Events SDK on top of the Perfecto platform. Absolutely. Uh, folks uh, find a tremendous amount of value um, from Perfecto, and, and we're going to talk about those as we, as we jump into the demo here. So, I'm going to demo uh, two different tools from Events. One of them is called our Flow Analyzer for mobile. And what that is going to do is that I'm going to uh, uh, connect directly to a device in the Perfecto cloud uh, and then uh, open my app and scan it uh, and, and walk through a user flow and scan it for accessibility issues along the way. And so that's the first tool. And that's great for both development because uh, this you could then, you know, as you're building the app, uh, you're pushing it to the device, you're checking. You can also uh, scan for accessibility issues at that point while you have Xcode open, while you have Android Studio open uh, to check for, uh, um, to add that to the development process, do initial checks to, to save a lot of time down the road. And then also for QA, because this, with the power of Perfecto, I can then uh, connect to any device directly from my workstation that is being hosted by Perfecto. So, you know, if I need to run through a sort of a regression type of approach where, you know, I need to grab, um, you know, 10 different Android devices, whether it be Google, Samsung, uh, uh, you have it. Um, Perfecto has that. I can detect, uh, I can access it remotely uh, very easily and, and run my accessibility regression. So this is an extre extremely powerful tool uh, that, that helps with, uh, you know, a user walking through a, a flow and, and in doing so, capture accessibility along the way. And then our second thing that I'm going to show is the uh, uh, the Events Appium SDK. And what we've done is uh, integrate that with the Quantum Framework and all of the awesome built-in features that that has. We're just going to add, simply add the accessibility piece to it so that we can scan uh, from our existing 
uh, quantum tests, we can just simply add accessibility scans. And at the end of our, our build, uh, not only will we get uh, the, the full report from quantum, all the additional uh, reporting information from the Perfecto platform, we'll also have uh, robust uh, accessibility reports of, uh, uh, from those tests as well. So enough talking, let's jump into it. Mm -hmm. Let me just share here. And for those of you that are not familiar with the quantum framework, quantum is an open source framework backed by Perfecto. Underneath the hood, it's really a Java BDD a test ng framework. So um, quantum is one flavor of BDD framework in Java you can utilize. Um, the same SDK from events could also be applied to other Java frameworks as well. But passing it back to you, Kevin. Great point, Johnny. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to open a device. So uh, I'm on the Perfecto platform here. I've, we've got a, an Apple iPhone avail available to us. So we're just going to open that. And that's going to launch the device. Uh, I'm, I'm accessing this uh, remotely. This is being hosted in the, the Perfecto data centers. And once this is loaded, I'm able to interact with this just as if it, the, the phone was in my hand. And so the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, this might be my favorite uh, uh, feature that the Perfecto has, is this dev tunnel. And by simply clicking this button, this is going to automatically essentially mock a USB connection. So my workstation that I'm looking at here is going to think that uh, there is this, that this iPhone is directly plugged into this phone via USB. And so you can see that this dev, dev tunnel um, a connection is established. And so now I'm just going to open my uh, my my test application here on the um, on, on the site. Um, well, we'll just open any application, uh, and then we can connect to uh, our accessibility test. So what we do is this is the event um, flow analyzer for mobile. And before we go on much further, uh, the first thing that I would like to point out is this is a free tool. This is accessible from the events website. You can go today, you can download it, and everything you're going to see here is included, and, and you can scan any application for accessibility issues. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, check out events.com flow analyzer for mobile, and we're able to, uh, you're able to download this today and use it with a Perfecto device just like I'm seeing. So I'm just going to rescan my workstation here so that we can see that device and uh, go from there. And Johnny, while this is um, while this is detecting my device, maybe you could say tell me a little bit about what additional reporting uh, is available from the Perfecto platform uh, while we're just connecting. Mm -hmm, absolutely. So reporting is a big part of our system, and there's really a few aspects to it. Out of the box, if you're running any tests, whether it's a manual test, um, um, automated test, or even a local test, um, by default, it, every single test will show up in our reporting dashboard. And that will include things such as test artifacts, screenshots, recording, device vitals. If you want to go deeper, you can also have things such as network logs, that are, that are output, um, but pretty much anything you would need for a QA or a developer uh, as a test asset, that can become available as part of that flow. And we've gone through quite a few iterations of our reporting. Uh, at the moment, it's really focused on the functional side of things. So um, all those artifacts um, would be tied towards a, a functional perspective. Uh, I think from an accessibility perspective, we do have the capability of adding additional accessibility outputs. Um, events, on the other hand, adds on top of that so that we can have additional um, report focus on accessibility issues. Great, thank you. So as you can see, we have connected to the device in the Perfecto Cloud. Um, oh, I've, I've, I've opened the application. It's an open source uh, radio app. Um, and uh, now that we have our app open, we can simply press this scan button. And this will... Uh, take a snapshot, gather all the information uh, from the application, and uh, scan it for accessibility issues. So here uh, we can see we've got a snapshot of the, the application. And 
on the right side, we have highlighted areas that have accessibility issues. So uh, those correlate to uh, the issues here in the, in the middle. And we, what we have here is, uh, you know, here we found a critical issue. And this is accessibility not enabled. That means that this menu button within this application is not, uh, 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 is not part of the accessibility tree. And so what that means is that if I'm using a screen reader, I'm not going to be able to get to this menu button. Um, for, for folks using, you know, voiceover on iOS, this button may as well not exist. And so this is a, a critical functional blocker. And we were able to find it uh, by just clicking scan and uh, detect this automatically. So um, the first thing that, I, that, that we want to go from here is uh, we can then walk through our user flow. So if we wanted to grab a uh, uh, click in here and, and go to a different radio station. We can then go back and, and click uh, scan again. That'll scan the new page. And uh, we're able to then walk through our entire flow, capturing all of these different states and scanning for accessibility issues. So once we have found uh, a number of these issues, uh, first thing we can do is check out um, the events knowledge base. And what this has is uh, a ton of information. First, it has a, a detailed description of what the issue is, um, as far as, as well as how to fix it. And so here we have for uh, Swift UI, um, Android with Kotlin, Android Java, React Native. This is how we can access uh, to, to fix these types of, of issues uh, right here from the code. And then. Um, here we have uh, sort of a, a theory section where uh, you know discusses how users are effective, the the WCAG success criteria, and then some recommended reading from our uh, accessibility experts in house for those who want to dive in a little bit deeper. So, what I wanted to talk about at this point is is the actual rule set and and the things that we again have focused on are of course aligning with WCAG, uh, but also talking about the things that impact end users the most. So, you know, some of the, the rule sets that we want to highlight are accessible name. Um, what that means is, you know, for example, if this, this button, if this weren't uh, created correctly, it might, the screen reader might read out something like unlabeled image. And so we're able to detect whether elements are correctly labeled. And uh, so that doesn't create frustra frustration um, uh, 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 and, and make sure that folks have a, a good experience. Um, color contrast, of course, making sure that the contrast issues are, are meet the, the criteria. Uh, accessibility not enabled, that's another thing that uh, we just previously discussed, impacts the ability to actually reach elements on the app. Interactable role, making sure that uh, the the application, the, the elements themselves, their their interactability is uh, 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 transmitted to the screen reader. Um, tappable area. This this is a, a good one because it, it measures the size of the touch target as well as the spacing between elements to make sure that uh, folks have uh, are, are going to select the elements that they're looking to. Uh, type and label, label capitalization, special characters, sentence like labels. These are, are, are important kind of quality of life type issues so that when people are using screen readers, they get uh, concise, uh, clear uh, descriptions from the labels provided for the elements. And then, of course, uh, duplicate name and colliding control. Uh, duplicate name, if we have multiple uh, elements on the on the app with the same name, that could be very confusing. And then if we have overlapping touch targets or, or elements, uh, can really make uh, a frustrating experience because we can't access the, um, uh, the elements. And then this is just the beginning. We have uh, more, uh, more rule sets that are on our, our will be out quite a way very soon. Text over uh, complex image or gradient, uh, screen reader order, uh, uh, all sorts of, of, of things that are right along the way. So, the last thing that I want to mention is once we have completed our flow, we are able to just jump right in here and we can create a full HTML report. And so what this will do is it'll create a report um, that we can uh, uh, then look at 
and has all the information we need to, again, uh, identify, replicate, and remediate the issues. So I'll go ahead and pull that up real quick. Uh, close that. I believe that's it. Oh, no. Um, so here's the HTML uh, of the that uh, of that scan we just created. And so what this is, is it has, again, the highlighted screenshots, the areas of the uh, that are correlated directly to the, the issues. We've got the element identification information and description. So uh, information we need here to uh, gain the value from, uh, uh, from these tests, pass it along to the appropriate folks who will be able to uh, address these issues quickly. Just curious, uh, Kevin, in your experience, if folks are not using the scanner, when are typically these issues, like in a, in a traditional shop, like when do they spot these issues? Is it, you know, at the end of a, end of a quarter, end of a sprint cycle? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, before a tool like events, these could only be caught by manual testing. And so that generally happens at the very end. Um, sometimes just completely uh, isolated from the release cycle. So some, you know, if we're outsourcing to a third party or something, perhaps that would only be happening once a quarter where, um, you know, we're releasing far more often than that. And so, you know, not, not only are we way behind with accessibility, we're putting out, um, you know, uh, continually putting out applications that, that aren't accessible and are making our, our users frustrated. Mm-hmm. And I guess compared to other scanners or legacy scanners in the market, seems like you you spot a uh, quite a few more elements compared to what type of uh, results they find. Exactly, and you know, Evinced is purely a technology company. You know, we aren't interested in you know selling hours of services to to do manual audits and things. As important as those things are, don't get me wrong, our primary goal is creating technology that detects issues automatically because every time you can automatically detect a an issue through a um, uh, an automated test or your existing Appium test, you're saving time at several places in, in the process. One, um, you know, if you catch it early, the developer can fix it right away without changing context. Two, um, you are automatically raising the bar of accessibility continuously for every release that you make, uh, because you're not dependent on uh, reporting from these uh, uh, these audits that may happen, uh, you know, once a quarter or once uh, once or twice a year. And then three, um, these audits are time consuming. They take a lot of time, and so uh, um, we're able to meet the velocity needs uh, of of modern release cycles. And what I really love about so this report that, is ahead. not only is it descriptive, but it has an actionable outcome, a description where developers can understand and action upon. Because I've seen I've seen other tools in the market where they're going to generate a report, uh, but nobody knows what to do with those reports. So it becomes like, okay, we, we detected an issue, but how do I remediate it? Exactly. And that's where that events knowledge base comes in, where we have... Um, uh, uh, um, ex code snippets describing exactly how to do it in all of these frameworks. And so a developer is going to be able to look at this, fix it right away, even if they're new or are just getting into accessibility. So I think with that, why don't we go ahead and uh, jump into the automation piece? Mm -hmm. So this is where we can integrate directly with uh, our existing functional test. And this is the quantum framework. We've got a, a, a BDD test here that uh, we're using Appium under the hood. Uh, and what we've done is uh, integrated uh, the uh, Evinced Appium SDK. And uh, I've just added a step in our existing test here that is and I scan for accessibility issues using Evinced. 
And so the beauty of this is because I've created the step definition, I could add it into any test that I would like that's appropriate to gain additional coverage for uh, accessibility testing. And so uh, what that looks like to define the steps is, is very simple. Uh, the uh, I've just here, define my step to do this is how easy this integration is we're looking at th exactly three lines of code the first thing is we take our uh, appium driver and in this case uh, our quantum driver uh, this is going to be a uh, a driver created and and uh, uh, on a device in the perfecto cloud so we're going to reach out to that same device and actually, just to make sure that this goes well, I'm going to go ahead and close this session so that this device will be ready for us when we kick off this test. Um, and what that's going to do is we're just going to wrap that with our events Appium class. And this isn't going to inter interfere with any of that existing tech uh, uh, functionality. You're going to be able to connect to the Appium, uh, to the Perfecto device. Your test is going to run just like it normally would. Uh, but what we're going to do is we've just added the libraries that we need to test for accessibility issues. Uh, then we've just got some some authorization here to authenticate the the, um, uh, the uh, with events, and we have our single line of code here to scan for accessibility issues. And this is going to capture the current current state, capture any um, uh, accessibility issues, and generate that report. So when we uh, run our test that we've added this in uh, on that same application, we just can add this line anywhere we'd like. And at the end of our build, we'll create a single consolidated uh, uh, report with all of the accessibility issues that we have found. And not only that, we have the ability to gate based on the uh, uh, appearance of accessibility issues. So if we see, you know, if we want to gate on things like um, the appearance of critical accessibility issues by severity or uh, issue type or, um, you know, by WCAG uh, tags, uh, we're able to do any sort of thing like that. So uh, if you uh, wanted to run an accessibility check on your smoke test, every time you submit a pull request as part of your normal checks, you could do that. And in fact, that's exactly what events does with our in-house uh, uh, component library is if we see an accessibility issue on any one of our components, that's going to fail the build, and the, uh, the developer has to then fix that, resubmit the pull request, and have that check passed before they can go through. And so we found that really in, uh, effective in-house, and, uh, and our customers have as well. So we can see this as a very simple test. It opens our app. Uh, we scan for accessibility issues. We click on the first radio station, click play, and then we would expect the, the radio station to be playing. So I'm just going to double check. Yep, our device is ready to go. And with that, uh, we can just run our test. So our test is going to start uh, compiling and running here. While we're saying this, uh, or while this is running, um, the first thing that I just want to say is this is a, a standard um, uh, jar available from the uh, uh, to, to download directly from your palm.xml file or using Gradle. Uh, you can grab a great right from our, our repository. And uh, again, uh, we have a 14-day a free trial available on the events website. If you want to try, uh, try the Appium SDK out or the, the Espresso XUI test, whatever your functional test are, you can uh, jump in here, have access to this, add it to your test, and see the value that you can grab by detecting mobile issues automatically as part of your existing test. Great, so our test is running here. We've got uh, that, uh, that device uh, started up really quickly. Um, and this is another area where um, um, uh, Perfecto is really great because we have the ability with Appium to um, run our tests again on, on either uh, a large number of devices so that we can run our tests in parallel so that our whole build uh, runs more quickly. And then also, um, we've got a, a broad coverage uh, of um, what is available 
device from devices. So not only can we run it on uh, uh, fast, but we can also in, in, improve our coverage. So of course, uh, uh, on, during a live demo, my test happened to fail, but being prepared, we have an, a, a test run we can look at uh, from yesterday. So um, let's see. We'll just look at our, uh, a test from yesterday. Um, let's see. How do I get to yesterday? So while I figure out how to get to, to, the, to the report, once our test has finished, we will automatically be generated both a HTML and a JSON report. And so this is that same, uh, this is from the Appium SDK. Uh, um, and this is the report that's generated from our uh, uh, automated test. And you'll notice that it looks exactly the same as uh, from the flow analyzer. Every test case gives us a, uh, uh, a, uh, a, a, a highlighted screenshot where if I hover over uh, the accessibility, it highlights the, the box on the screen, and I'm able to have uh, element identification information description, and again, a link to that, uh, uh, um, the, knowledge, the events knowledge base. So yeah. Um, this is how easy it is to integrate uh, uh, accessibility tests within your existing code. As you'll remember, quite literally, we're talking about three lines of code, and we can add that scan to any test that you'd like and, and, and in order to get as much accessibility coverage in your application as is appropriate. So. Absolutely. So I think I think we've got. Uh, I think that concludes the demo. I think, Johnny, we've got one more slide. Thank you, Kevin. Great demo, and I really love how the the tool tools play together to deliver tons of value. And I agree, it's um, it's really both sides of the things. Um, the the SDK component giving you the visibility and also the the insight that you need. And also the lab component where it makes it easy to scale out your not only your accessibility requirements, but running it across multiple devices, whether it's Android, iOS, and the framework coverage. I know that nowadays folks choose all sorts of framework, whether it's Flutter, React, you name it. There's just quite a few different frameworks underneath the hood. And having a single technology that can cater towards um, all of those different frameworks brings it easy, makes it easy for an enterprise where you might have, you know, dozens of teams doing different development, they can all use the same tool and bring value to that. But really just a summary exactly. of the joint value proposition. Really, this is more of like a before and after. Before, what we see is really what's happening on, on top, where accessibility is kind of like a, a, a last thing that is checked off the box at the end of the cycle. But what we're really bringing in, in today as a, as a value proposition is shifting left, the value of shifting left, getting developers a faster feedback loop. We're talking about minutes, hours, and days rather than weeks, quarters, and, and years. And we're really talking about um, existing automation, the right along concept, which um, really is three lines of code that Kevin has shown you need to change in order to embed and, and write along your existing functional tests and bring more value to, to the existing assets that you've already written. The flexibility in that, whether it's Appium, Selenium, Espresso, XCUI, the various common frameworks that everyone uses for automation. Um, that is that is a, definitely going to be an important aspect as we know that there's going to be multiple teams that can leverage something like this. But really, it's about the, the time saved, but the, also the faster feedback loop so that it, it provides all sorts of uh, stakeholders within STLC uh, much uh, faster feedback and, and a lot more value. So I know we're, we're running... On the top of the hour, we have about five to 10 minutes left, but we really want to open the forum for any questions you might have. Yeah, great. Thank you uh, very much to both of you. Uh, we do, did get a couple questions in during the presentation. Um, Anjali asks, do enter enterprises today struggle with A11Y issues due to lack of knowledge or tools? Yeah, I think that's really one of the key aspects. Um, there simply aren't a lot of 
of mobile accessibility tools out there. Um, there, there are a couple, you know, uh, uh, Apple has one and, and Android has one, but they're built into their development platforms and, um, you know, they're really not built for enterprise level reporting and, and gaining the value out of them. And so uh, that's where events jumped in to solve that problem, to make sure that there's, there's a tool for every place along in the pipeline, whether that be a developer or, you know, or a QA person or, you know, running a, a scan on your entire website in production, to make sure that folks have the tools that they need in order to address accessibility at every point where uh, uh, where where it's needed. Mm -hmm. so Kevin, I know you mentioned earlier on, and this is one thing where it got me really excited when talking about events, is really the technology behind the tool. So you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, not only just reading from the document object model bottom up, but the computer vision, and more importantly, the machine learning aspect of that, which is really puts this as an as a next generation tool, which can detect a lot more issues than a traditional tool can. Absolutely, and a couple of great examples of that. As one, I'll do one for web and one for mobile. One, uh, one on on web that we do is is called focus indication, and so what that does is it uh, uh, looks at an element, and and if it has an, a focus indication ring, what we do is we use computer vision to compare um, uh, the unfocused version of the element and the focused version of the element, uh, and and compare the contrast to make sure that it meets the WCAG standards. And so uh, that's an example of where we're using both the computer vision to capture uh, and analyze the images and then creating the, the models then create the, the data from which to uh, uh, provide the contrast ratio. And in mobile, uh, one of the things, it's just so exciting, um, uh, traditionally, uh, these types of advanced technology, computer vision, uh, uh, ML models, they're quite resource intensive and, um, and difficult to uh, kind of, and, and they can be also uh, 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 sizable and they're just not generally um, easy to, to do on a mobile device. And so um, Evinced has, has uh, designed lean and efficient uh, computer vision models so that we're able to run these on an actual device and catch a number of different issues. One of those, as I mentioned previously, is if we have uh, text over an image, uh, like a picture that has various background colors and complex background, we can compare uh, and create and let you know whether that text meets the contrast standard by using com computer vision to analyze the different gradients. And so those are two areas in which events is using modern technology to solve accessibility problems. And this is just the beginning. Uh, I, we're really excited about all the additional um, uh, rule sets and automatic protection that that type of uh, technology is gonna unlock. Great, uh, another question we received um, from Marisol is, is events open source for all digital channels or just mobile? Yeah, so we have uh, our, our, um, our, our flow analyzer for mobile is available to download and, and use for free. That's a free tool that Events has provided to the community. It's, it's really exciting. You're able to use that really uh, easily for both development and QA is where we see that fitting in the most, but there are other areas. And that's a, that's a free tool. You're able to, to download that and um, and grab that. Our other tools have a free trial model. So if you're interested in, in doing a production scan of your of your website, you're welcome to, to log on to events.com, sign up, and, and you can have two weeks. You can run uh, a number of different scans and get an idea of uh, the types of rule sets, validations, and value that events provides. And the same for our mobile automation SDKs. Those are available for a 14-day um, uh, 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 free trial. And you know, of course, uh, we'd, we'd love to talk to you. If you'd love to learn more about uh, our, our tools or, or do a more structured evaluation, we'd be happy to chat. Great, um, I have, let's do one more. Um, let's see here, what are the steps to integrate this into an existing CI CD process? So that's the beauty of, of both 
you know, the the perfecto and and events process. You know, uh, the quantum framework is built and, and is so easy to uh, add to your uh, uh, CI/CD pipeline because all of the tools are are built in. The reporting is automatic. It, it, it provides all of the information, and and when you have that set up, it, you can run it on any any CI tool. And and what's nice is is events is a small dependency that you add into that framework that's already existing. And so uh, what all we're doing is augmenting your existing uh, tests and reports with accessibility. And so uh, to be to be honest, there, there really is no additional work needed to integrate with CI because um, if you're already running your functional web or mobile tests on a CI uh, server and, 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 and aggregating the reports, um, adding events uh, will just be added as a dependency on the framework level. So it's very, very easy. As you saw, it was just simply three lines of code within the framework. Mm -hmm. And I think one thing I heard from you, Kevin, is uh, events does have that gating ability depending on severity exactly. to, you know, to have a condition and, and have a different outcome. So it sounds like that's uh, already been thought through and that's something where you could um, fail or pass a build depending on what's uh, showing up. Exactly, and that's that's perfect for those early, really early pipeline tests where we're pushing our initial code or creating the initial pull request where you want to get that instant feedback so that, um, you know, at our, uh, at events, uh, that information, we have uh, we have a requirement where that has to be re uh, uh, within five minutes. So the developer has to get feedback on the accessibility of their pull request in order to you know, um, make sure that uh, they have the information they need, that they it doesn't block their uh, their development process, and uh, there's uh, not context switching that could could make it uh, frustrating for for developers. So it's a really important uh, uh, aspect. Great. Uh, we'll wrap up the Q and A for now. If we didn't get to your question, uh, we'll contact you um, via email later. Um, so thank you to our audience for your attendance and partic participation today. And of course, to our presenters, um, Kevin and Johnny. We hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.